Hello and welcome to this short video on the IUPAC nomenclature of cyclic aldehydes. So we are going to look at ring systems in which there is an aldehyde group present. For example, if I have something like this and the aldehyde is present here. So I am first assuming a situation where the carbonyl carbon is directly attached to the ring. So, how do we name this? Well, in such an instant, the basic logic of naming becomes cycloalkane carbaldehyde. Whenever we do not include the CHO in the parent, and yet it is the principal functional group, we call it carbaldehyde. So this is cycloalkane, whatever is the number of carbon that forms the ring, cycloalkane carbaldehyde and it's a one single word. So how do we do this? Uh, the name of an aldehyde in which the aldehyde group is directly attached to a carbon atom of a ring system is formed by adding the suffix carbaldehyde or dicarbaldehyde depending upon how many CHOs you have to the name of the ring system. So, what would you be naming this as? Pause and uh, name it and then play it back. Now, as I said, we are going to name it as cycloalkane carbaldehyde. So, using that logic, this is going to become cyclohexane carbaldehyde. Remember, I have the E of the hexane because this is starting with a consonant, C. Alright, try this one. Now, without uh, 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 changing any of the rules here, we must understand that since the principal functional group is the aldehyde group, the carbon that it is attached with on the ring is automatically numbered as 1. And we don't have to talk about the position number because it is already assumed to be 1. Now, keeping this as 1, you have to give position numbers such that each of the substituent gets as low a number as possible. So, how do we do this? The numbering, if this is 1, there are two ways of doing it. Since all the carbons have the, uh, the, the substituents present in them, obviously, I am going to get uh, 1 as carbaldehyde and 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all of them are occupied, whether I number it clockwise or anticlockwise. So the numbering cannot decide in this particular case because I get the same numbers. So what would happen is you go for the first number that you get after 1, 2. Now here the 2 is going for ethyl. You go anticlockwise, this gets 2 and this is methyl. And alphabetically ethyl comes before methyl. So, ethyl should be getting another number 2. So, here we name it, we number it, sorry, uh, anticlockwise. And so, what would be the name? Well, I got ethyl, I got uh, two methyls, then I got isopropyl, and then I got propyl. So, first I should be naming ethyl, then isopropyl, then the methyls, and then the propyl. So, this is going to be 2-ethyl, 4-isopropyl, 3,6-dimethyl, 5-propyl, cyclohexane, carbaldehyde. So, this is the name. What would happen if I were to have the CHO not attached to the ring, but outside the ring. In such a case, this is the parent, the chain having CHO. And this is substituent. Now, the parent is ethanol. And this is going to be cyclohexyl ethanol because it is a substituent. 
I'm not uh, here writing any numbers. That is because this is automatically one, and this is two. And in ethanol, you got only two carbons, so the aldehyde carbon is anyway one, and the aldehyde carbon. And when I say cyclohexyl ethanol, it means I need to first draw ethanol, and then try to place a cyclohexyl. And the only place I can place cyclohexyl is this carbon. I cannot place it here. Therefore, this is ethanol, and I have a cyclohexyl group attached to it. But if the carbons do increase, then I need to mention the numbers. Suppose this is CH two, CH two, CHO. This is the parent. But now we have to specify where the cyclohexyl group is present. So I number it one, two, three, and then I say three. Cyclohexyl propanol. We don't have to say one propanol; it is a functional group. We always start from that. It's a chain terminating functional group. So I guess uh, this is how uh, we are going to be naming uh, aldehydes in which there are rings. In cases where the CHO is directly attached, and in cases where it is not directly attached. I hope this video helps you in understanding the naming of cyclic aldehydes thanks for watching